What is good, YouTube? This is the FF Dynasty coming at you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe, like, and comment below with either love or if you're feeling like some hate, throw some shade down there. Either way, it all greatly helps us out so we can keep bringing you new content. All right. So we are going to move into just talking about a couple of rookies, and then we're going to throw a couple of guys out at the end that we're all, some of us are interested in uh, going to purchase. Not going to get too deep into it, but, you know, just some names. Uh, so obviously this week, T. Higgins and Justin Jefferson have a uh, coming out party with sprinkling a little Ayuk, really making his uh First real big appearance here and looking like he's going to fit right in. Uh, but we'll touch Ayuk last year. Higgins, we'll start with him for the Clemson grad in Jay Wayne uh, with a John Ross healthy scratch. Higgins got the start and ended up with a high, a slightly higher snap count, uh, snap percentage than A.J. Green, 79 to 76%, um, and out-targeted him 16 to 11. Um, and, you know, T looked like he was getting – well, I mean, that backs it up, was getting plenty of looks from Joe Burrow. Um, not to say that it won't go back and forth between him and A.J. Green, but we know A.J. Green wasn't going to be around forever. T was a guy that we all had uh, right outside that second tier of receivers and the second tier being uh, Jefferson, who we'll talk about next. Judy and Reger was in the tier. And then the next break, uh, CDB by himself, next break was being uh, T. Higgins to start that one. I'm sorry, did you um, say 16 targets? Uh, yeah, I think so. Last this week, yeah, I'll fact check. Let me, that. I can double check that, or somebody else can double check. I it. got you. I should have been looking, I was just in awe of that number like 16 targets. Crown, they throw it a no, lot. It was nine targets. He, he's got 15 on the year, okay. But that's a lot. That that, that snap percentage being more than AJ Green, that I definitely didn't know that. Yeah, um, I've seen I, that too. So it's good to see him on the field. He he off snapped Tyler Boyd too. Yeah, that's a little surprising. Um, didn't really register when John Ross was a healthy healthy scratch. Last week, Auden Tate was a healthy scratch. So they've been they've been testing out who who they want in there, and it, it's like, well, you got to go with T. I don't know that I'm necessarily ready to start him and fire him up yet, but for the dynasty no. stock that I have, super excited. I mean, he was making you know he looked like he did in college. You know, he's he's a he's big and he's fast. Like he's not super fast, but he is. He's he's faster on the field in pads than he is in a combine in shorts. And he's he's football fast. And he goes up and makes plays. Um, he did have he did have a, a a bad you know he didn't secure that ball in overtime that would have converted that first down. Um, and it happened a few times in Clemson. That was one of the knocks on him was that you know he really needs to bring that ball in when he catches it, and he'll learn from that. Squeeze it. But the fact that, you know, they got him running on crossers in the end zone, they, they designed that first touchdown pass to go to him um, on kind of like a little delayed route that he ran. And he's just so fast. You can't cover him from side to side and guard the 6'4 body. And so love the fact that he's tied to Joe Burrow for the, for the rest of their career, or for at least the next several years. And uh, things Definitely. are looking up. Great to see. Great to see from T. Higgins. Oh, ye, go Tigers. Yeah, I mean, you obviously can't buy them this week after a two-touchdown performance. But, Never. Never. Nah, but I don't think that necessarily keeps up. Maybe it does, but I think there's, you know, the, give it some time, and if he's not performing well, because, I mean, Tyler Boyd's out there. He's a stud. A.J. Green should theoretically get some more targets, and there's, there's you know, different things going on there, and, and I don't think that this is going to be an every week occurrence necessarily. But yeah amazing to see it this early and really like if you didn't have t higgins you were kind of wait you didn't want this to happen because there's an opportunity to maybe buy low like a guy mims is on the other end of this spectrum whereas those guys were kind of neck and neck where you would take them in a rookie draft and mims has missed this offseason everybody hates the jets which we'll get to that in the next segment but like mims is a guy that you could definitely go by low but t higgins coming out and getting two touchdowns like you can't get there's not a by low opportunity right now but there definitely could be yeah, just gonna forward. just gonna have to wait yeah um so that 16 and 11 the 16 that was target percentage um mm, target t's percentage. target percentage was 16 percent and what percentile uh, was aj greens was 11 percent so <laughs> um and then percentile. obviously justin jefferson has his 
huge coming out party and looks Ooh. the part like like we said we had, we had him in the in that second tier again cdb by himself uh we all really love justin jefferson and uh he looked outstanding uh, obviously that's probably not going to be like that every week because they clearly want to run the ball but uh, they came out and actually threw it around the yard a little bit, and Justin Jefferson was a looked like a man out there doing his thing. Yeah, that was incredible, and and I mean, I almost do feel I feel way more comfortable trying to fire up Justin Jefferson next week than I do T. Higgins, um, because he's worked his way up to be that second receiver in that offense, and it's like they're gonna need to throw it. Yeah, they want to run the ball and play defense, but their defense sucks, and they were actually in that game, and they could have won it, and they were playing better by throwing it around a little bit more. But to bust off 170-something yards is just insane. But you just saw everything that you saw from him in college. Like, he looks he looks bigger than 6'2". Like you said, Casey, he looks long. Yeah, he looks he's long. Going up there to yeah. make those plays. And he's going up in the air, and he's making contested catches, the same thing you saw from him in college. And it's not like he's just lining up in the slot because they're mostly playing two wide receiver sets. So he's, he's winning on the outside. You know, and that was one of the questions. It was like, can this man win on the outside? And, you know, we had him really high ranked, as you said, in, in rookie drafts. And, like, I had a hard time not putting him at the top of that second tier. And, and there, there was a couple instances where I got on the clock and I had 1-8 or 1-9 and Rager and Jefferson and Judy or, the, or maybe Judy was gone at that point. And I, I, I traded out to 110 knowing the guy wanted Rager so that I could yeah. still get Jefferson. Like, I, I passed on Rager so that yeah. I could still get Jefferson and pick up some equity. And, like, super stoked about that. And just to, just to see him winning on the outside, doing the same things he did in college, contested catches, after the catch ability, just just route running and I mean touchdown dances, like it's just it was popping off. It was great to see, and I'm I'm ready to freaking fire Justin Jefferson up if I have to. Like, yeah, I don't I don't know if I'd go that far just because the they need the, him. Uh, they need the way him. that offense has been run over three weeks. I'm gonna I'm gonna need to see a little bit more of how it goes. But what more can you well, the next get to see? the next three weeks are three of the easiest defenses in the league to go yeah. against. Um, they got Houston, Seattle, and Atlanta. Um, and those so guys can put up points. Draw. So yeah, you got, yeah, you got offenses that can move the ball and defenses that can't stop you from moving the ball. So yeah, well, maybe, apparently maybe, the Vikings are up. one of those defenses now that can't stop anybody. So they they're sure. gonna, might have to figure out that they're getting in, in uh, shootouts for the most part. So, well, we're going to have a, a, a a gambling segment start up for our Patreon members and uh, a little, a little uh, peek behind the curtain. Pay attention to how quickly Zimmer potentially gets this defense under wraps. Like, uh, you know, he's been, he's been the best against the spread coach outside of Bill Belichick for the last X amount of years since he's been the Vikings head coach. And it's been based on defense and they've had a huge defensive transformation this year in the in the in the wrong direction on the field, but they got a lot younger. Um, so just before you go out there firing off in the next week or two, saying the Vikings defense is terrible, let's fade them. If you haven't done that already, it's don't you don't want to be. That's what that's how people lose money gambling. You you can't yeah. be say all right, well the the Vikings got the worst defense in the league. That was the first three weeks. You know, yeah, you got. Well, they lost this, Anthony Barr this game too, didn't they? Uh, yeah, is he hurt? Like hurt, hurt. I, I, think, I know he went out, but I don't know if he's hurt, so. hurt. They lost. Uh, they lost a couple of uh, big corners, and and Michael Pierce, who was their big acquisition, uh, uh, he opted and they, out. And so they, they do have old, Ngakwe coming in, right? Ngakwe. But he just got there. What's well, the efforts and Griffins on the Cowboys? You right. know, just so a lot of turnover of, there. Tons of defensive turnover. So it'd be interesting. It's just funny, you know. It's like that's that's what the public does it's like all right well the vikings defense is terrible let's just see wh how they uh, what happens before you go throwing your wallet the other direction well definitely not trying to start the vikings defense in fantasy that's for sure <laughs> hell no um so last guy on the list is probably still available to buy and uh if, especially if you weren't paying attention because i don't know there was a whole lot of people watching that giants uh <laughs> niners game there but Ayuk goes out there and just looks like he's just a match made in heaven for this offense like we suspected, just like we suspected. <laughs> and uh, Debo should be back and Kittle should be back. And I'm I'm actually getting a little kind of excited to see what this offense can look like with all those players active and uh, running around out there and, you know, just 
handpicked to do exactly what their skill sets do. And we saw how fast Debo came around. I'm expecting a similar thing from IU. And if we could get all those guys on the field, I'm uh, really excited to see Sh- Shanahan doesn't carry, doesn't carry the quarterback is give me Nick Mullins. We're going to throw it all over the damn yard. Yeah. Um, I don't think since the fifties has somebody come off the quarterback, come out like that and thrown for as many yards as he did. Um, so he was Shanahan doesn't care. He's going to get it done with the personnel he's got. And I think there's still a plenty of area to buy uh, Ayuk. And I think the Niners are uh, going to be fine on offense for a while, fantasy wise. So, I mean, it might not be the I, best I week. What I could to pick Ayuk to try and buy Ayuk. I mean, he turned eight touches into 101 yards and a touchdown. That's like real damn impressive for 21 PPR points. Um, yeah, might not be the best week, but. Definitely encouraging to see, and he's, he is what we thought he was, and he fits in just like we thought he would with his offense. And I definitely didn't see that whole game, but from what I did see, it was that he he was getting manufactured touches, um, which that's that's I love to see a good manufactured touch. Like that means you're <laughs> literally trying to get my man an easy an easy uh, uh, I a love touch. A good manufactured touch. He was yeah. he's that chess piece that you thought that people thought Dante Pettis might be, except he looks like he's for real. So, but the fact that they still don't have Debo coming back and they were without Kittle, maybe there is, you know, maybe that is a, a way. Well, that's that, kind of what I'm saying. Those guys might be coming back this week or next. And then if you didn't watch that game and see how good he looked in his touches, uh, you might just think, ah, oh, he just did that because there wasn't anybody else there. Um, but when this is an offense that can easily score 30 some points a game, well, the, the the Niners as a team to go out and win games and as a team that can put for fantasy points are in the best case scenario is with a capable backup. Mm-hmm. Um, there You couldn't, I mean, I, I, I didn't think about this before I started talking about it, but I don't know how many teams have a better, more capable backup uh, than Nick Mullins. Obviously, the Cowboys have, uh, you know, uh, the Andy red Dalton. rifle, Andy Dalton, but not, you know, and I don't just, know how many teams. You just saw the Bears uh, – Calling the, the Bears, Foles over the Bears there. Went to Foles. The Bears <laughs> went to Foles. Um, but I mean, Mullins had a full season. Quote: Jimmy G got hurt in game two or three two years ago. You know. Yeah. Uh, so the Mick, Nick Mullins basically had a full season in, in with this team and didn't look terrible doing it. He was the talk of the town. Remember the one of those Monday night games where like Nick Mullins was like four and zero or five and one or something like that. You know, just one of those things where everybody loved him because he was a new thing and everybody. Nobody knew who he was, and he was performing. Um, so that's good for the Niners and good for your fantasy assets on the Niners um, because Jimmy G gets hurt. Nick Mullins comes in, throws the ball all over the place. You love to see that. Yeah. Uh, the Niners have had two straight off seasons where people come knocking for, for Mullins, and they basically have turned everybody down and almost said he's kind of untouchable. So, yeah, they Even like him. the old <laughs> move along. Best. That's the best shoe. You do that. If, anytime you get an opportunity to, to shoe someone, it's just the best feeling in the world. It's like the most demeaning thing you could do to someone. Like, can't believe I didn't see it in the debate. Just move along. 